Happy Friday, everybody. We're on an endless trip to Universal Studios to check out the opening day of Harry Potter Celebration. By the way, this is how all of the construction is looking now for the new hotel that should be open in another few months. So there's a parking garage over there. There's a lot of mud, water trucks. And here's the structures for Sapphire Falls. So you have that. The building in the middle, probably like the entranceway to the hotel. And another building over there. Looks far along, but they really need to be wrapping up in a couple of months. Here's one more building. It's more complete. This guy was in so much of a rush that he cut me off going around construction just there. And again, shifting lanes because he's not sure where he's going. So this will be good because I'll probably end up parking right next to him. That's the one good thing about, you know, parking at Universal Studios. If someone's a jerk to you and they're right in front of you or behind you, chances are you're going to park like right next to them anyway. I guess the same is for any theme parks. So today I wanted to try to get into the Harry Potter Expos, take a look around, see what's happening. Um, and then see if we can get in for um, a little bit of video at the opening show at the end of the night. Um, I know it's going to be packed. I don't know how much time we're going to have to spend here tomorrow. And I'm actually still not feeling all that great. So it's almost actually wiped me out to even get on the highway to get over here. So I want to be able to show you guys some stuff, what's happening, and have a little bit of fun, hopefully. For everyone's safety, you're going to go through a metal detector. Well, the lines are bad but they're not as bad as they were when we came here last Saturday morning. So I beeped as usual. It's always my belt, but going on our way. I don't recall seeing these signs here before for like bread box and cowfish out on City Walk. They're still doing construction on that one little square of concrete or triangle before everybody kills me in the comments. Welcome wizards, witches, and muggles to Universal Studios Florida contingent out here of people that are waiting to get in for media events for Harry Potter and it's a hot set no surprise the map features Harry Potter this week so many people in robes here today let's take a quick spin here first and see what's shaking Ooh, there's new barriers up around one of the stars let's see it doesn't look like it's new but it looks like they just filled in some of the concrete they have Woody Woodpecker and Curious George out outside the prop shop the park is surprisingly very crowded for a Friday afternoon. Check out this line for Bumblebee. Whoa. It's Shrek and Fiona, but no donkey. They have Harry Potter playing up on the screens at the music splasher. At least it's not loud. And this is the complete schedule of events. So today you can see there's really not much happening except for the movie in the park and the expo and the opening night. No Beetlejuice out here. And we stopped by the horror makeup show too, but I don't know. And they've already got tents set up for next week when Mardi Gras starts. Mardi Gras should be interesting too without this available space to get beads. By God, it's Dumbledore. So this is the entrance to the Harry Potter Expo. I'm not sure if they're letting people in because it looks like it's pretty packed. This line is gigantic. Yikes. At least they're showing the movies on a screen out here, too. So we've been online for about 30 minutes. We moved about 20 feet. This is still the line in front of us. All of a sudden, the line's moving at a pretty good clip. That guy is Hufflepuff all the way down to his fanny pack. Now we've got uh, one of Snape's finest moments. Rest in peace, Alan Rickman. Tell me about it. Bellatrix. We've got some Slytherin walking by. So close now. Only this much more in front of us. We're about an hour in. Right there. The Hogwarts Express is going by behind the Public Library in New York. These guys have the free paper house ties again. That's really cool. I got Slytherin again. Woo now we've hit an extended pause so that all of the cool kid media can get in here first. Yay! I don't know how well you guys can see in the light, but there's like swarms of no CMs all around here. By the way, we have Joey over here, but more importantly behind Joey, it's the uh, construction for Twister Jimmy Fallon from like behind over here. So you can see clear through the building. 
there's like nothing left inside there. Finally going inside. So walking right in, they have these things. Have you seen these wizards? Photo ops. Awesome. Check this out. They look so fuzzy and friendly. They've got like figures here. So they're going to be selling these. HarryPotterShop.com slash celebration. So much copyrighted music in the background. They're pretty good likenesses. We've got more over here. Harry looks a little old. Um, kind of looks good, I guess. I like that he who shall not be named. I've got books, puzzles, the Noble Collection again. So here's the Dumbledore Cup, the Crystal Goblet, Hourglass. Love it. And I've got Dobby and Hogwarts, and some things from Harry Potter, Universal Studios Japan. I love that. That's a hat. Black milk dresses from Australia. And we've got this massive Lego Hogwarts. That's incredible. <laughs> My own copyrighted music. Caw, caw, caw. You can sign this wall for Harry Potter, what he means to you. We've done that last year. There's a strangely familiar looking guy right here. He's totally not looking at us though. But, um, right. Oh, wait, it, it's, is it Harry Potter? Where are your spectacles, sir? I can't see, I don't know who you are right now. <laughs> Free posters, the Sorcerer's Stone, that's pretty awesome. So after you wait on that giant line outside, they have this gigantic line inside to get on the um, Warner Brothers Studio Tour. Holy cow. So this is like a mini five minute walkthrough of the studio tour that's in the UK. But the line to get in here today is probably about two hours or so. Yikes, on top of the one hour and a half to get in the building. So this is about the extent of what's inside of here. It goes down to that store over there in the corner and then over here you have the exhibit. And we've been on this line now for about an hour. That looks to be like the big like museum exhibit. So last year they had a bunch of prop pieces in the middle and they had costumes, but they don't have it this year. They just have like stuff over there. On location in United Kingdom. These are all little from filming locations for different scenes. It's the Shell Cottage. That is the exact film cell that we got in our loot crate this month. There is a Death Eater in there being very cordial and taking pictures. I think he could be signing autographs now, from what I can see. He's signing somebody's autograph book. To Mary, love Death Eater. What does death taste like? Maybe I should ask him. Death Eater! Could they be like stormtroopers? When you just see them in the hallway, you're like, Death Eater? Death Eater? Death Eater? Death Eater? So much copyrighted music! Welcome to Warner Brothers Studio Tour London. Your journey is about to begin. We are going to relive the magic through the eyes of the filmmaker who brought Harry Potter film series to life. Look at all of these wands. Oh, check this out. They're making wands. It's so awesome. They have George Weasley's tube here. Taller than when mine slides towards the back, that'd be great. Did a lot of the props Harry Potter films as well as a lot of the wands. Excuse me. You guys have seen on screen now uh, their team handles, all of that fun stuff. Now, the wands will start out uh, with just as uh, bits of wood, so uh, things like this, dowels like that. Uh, then they can be hand carved out, so uh, some of the more intricate stuff at the top will be all hand carved. Or they turned on a lathe like uh, what Kat's working on right now. Now normally they're working off of an artist drawing, so like the ones behind uh, myself and uh, Kat and Tracy. 
Now, um, for those that are going a lot slower, they're gonna measure all the time, making sure that everything's perfect down to the millimeter, because they wanna make sure, um, one, that they don't have to keep doing it over and over again, and two, um, that it's as close to perfect as it can be. And once we're happy with it, um, they're gonna go ahead and cast the silicone. So it's the silicone mold of Harry's wand. Um, would have been molded off of a wooden wand, very similar to the one that they're working on right now. Um, once they get past that stage, we have a mold of it, so we can go and start casting the wands in a bunch of different mediums. So um, some of the things we'll cast them in is rubber, which is a rubber wand, uh, a little bit more bendy, so it's a lot more durable. We'll use those for stuntmen, uh, things like that, so they're not poking themselves. So the resin wand, they're not snapping wands in half. Uh, this one's car or, I'm sorry, um, made out of resin. So this one's going to be very, very similar to the ones we sell here at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in both parts. Those are all resin wands as well. Now those resin wands are all made off of molds that are very, very similar to these. Uh, we're just doing lots more of them at a time, but they'll be uh, painted to match the wood that they would have carved them out of originally. So yeah. I mean, you're more than welcome to take some pictures, uh, but while we're waiting for the next room to clear out for you guys, do you have any questions? That was pretty much all the time that we were in there. And mind you, that wait was over an hour long to get So apparently they have a play coming up. The eighth story, 19 years later, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Some Menelimas here again this year. All these prints and cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Marauder's yeah. Map, Quibbler. Charm bracelets by the individual houses. They have their store. We saw that item last year. Uh, cool books. There's those charms. Kind of usual universal items. You have Pottermore making a representation here as well. Let's play some Kidditch. Was it Kidditch or Quidditch? Kidditch or Quidditch? What is it called? Kidditch or Quidditch? Quidditch. Quidditch. Everyone's wrong. Quidditch. Quidditch. You call it Quidditch? I call it Quidditch. Do you call it Quidditch? We had a major argument in the Cheap Seats household where I called it Kidditch, suggesting they were arguing, and now an argument solved, we were both wrong. So they have Quidditch materials here that you can take a picture at the exhibition. So you have this ball, the ball is a quaffle, is it not? Yeah. I had that right. That's a quaffle. <laughs> I thought it was, it was a ram cake. No. 
So they have the sorting hat out here again. So it's outside of the expo hall. One gentleman doing the sorting. And loyal. True. Yes, clearly. Congratulations. There you go. The line is very short now because they cut it off for the night. But this line generally runs over an hour. So all of these people are queued up for the next hour and a half to try to watch the opening ceremonies. We're back at the prop shop. Shop, shop, shop. Ooh, this thing is down at $2,500. I think it used to be 3000 so I'm pretty sure they lowered the price on this. Hey. Oh my goodness. They have to sign for Beetlejuice Graveyard. And this sign is $1,000. And they have one letter left from Beetlejuice. This was the marquee letter. 100 bucks. They have this door here from Disaster. 1,000 bucks. The sign for Disaster Studios, $1,000 also. They still have the flying cow from Twister. Is it still 4,000? Yes, it is. 500 bucks for this Disaster queue map. And unknown how much this is. Oh, 1200 bucks. Good guy Joey telling you. Coming to you live. We are in the music plaza amongst thousands of people. Waiting for another 20 minutes or so for the opening night ceremonies to begin. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you knew of course we couldn't start this weekend without pausing to remember Alan Rickman, so let's make some noise for Alan, please. We know he touched all of our lives and he remains in our thoughts and our memories as well. And this weekend, it's time to do some celebrating. Wizards, witches, and muggles, Welcome to a celebration of Harry Potter 2016! We're very excited. Not only do we have many of your favorites back this year, ladies and gentlemen, but we've added some new content as well. This year we've added a very special Saturday night experience. Here at the Music Plaza stage will be a tribute to the Harry Potter franchise, where I've heard there'll be some, uh, well, some special announcements made. Are you a Gryffindor out there? Maybe you're a Slytherin. How about Hufflepuff? Or perhaps a Ravenclaw? And we've been traveling from city to city since 2009, and we just announced an extension to the exhibition, so if you're a world traveler, you'll see it out there. And uh, we're gonna be on the road till 2020, which is really big news for wow. us. Wow. Yeah, really excited. That's awesome. And uh, where are you guys going next with the uh, tour? Um, well, I, I can't really tell you because we haven't announced it. It's, it's a secret, but I'm, you're cool. I, mean, I'm, I'm sure, I, I can I'm whisper sure, it to you. We, no, I mean, not to me, but I, I'm sure they all want to hear where you guys are going next. You guys want to hear where we're going next? Come on, Eddie. Okay, uh, but, but for an announcement this big, mm -hmm. I'm going to need a little help. Okay. That's all right. You guys, it's all right if I ask for a little help? Yeah, let's Call do it. Friend. Sure. All right. Well, a really good friend of the exhibition, a good friend of ours, um, and has just been a huge supporter, is here. Uh, he's hanging around this weekend, so uh, Matt, will you please join us on stage? I guess you've got a couple words to say, right, Matt? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I, I, happen, I happen to know where the exhibition's gonna be. You do? I do! Okay. Anybody out there want to hear where the exhibition's gonna go next? Yeah! Alright. It's, it's quite... Can, can, I, can I tell them? Eddie? You, you want them to tell you? 
please do. Okay. Harry Potter, the exhibition, has a very long trip to make. It will be travelling across numerous countries in order to get to its new destination and open its doors on June 30th in Brussels, Belgium. What? Wow. Yeah, we are so thrilled to be going to Brussels and, and going back to Europe. You know, the, the exhibition was in Paris. It was a huge hit. And Matt can attest when, when there's pretty cool contests that we're going to do too. Should we yeah. Talk about the contest? Talk about the contest. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to have one lucky winner and a friend. We're going to choose one and we're going to bring them to Brussels for the opening. And so they're going to be our correspondent. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. Welcome to Pottermore. This is my magical corner of the internet. New information will be revealed about the characters, places, and magic you're familiar with, as well as introductions to a few new characters, places, and notions. Okay. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which opens this summer in the West End in London, and the Warner Brothers film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Years later, this year in November. We'll be bringing you news, interviews and features direct from the set and the stage later this year. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out and I'm thrilled to be here tonight and to share this with you. Um, it's very exciting information. I geeked out over it earlier, so I think you will too. Um, so first of all, you know how much Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry means to me, and I know how much it means to you as well. Um, it created some of you know the most famous British wizards of all time. It schooled them and taught them all their magic, and um, and it was also my home. Um, and I know lots of you have been sorted into your Hogwarts houses as well. And if you haven't, you can go on Pottermore today and get sorted there because there's a new quiz, which I also did. I got Gryffindor again, just saying. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, I thought I was gonna get Slytherin when they brought out the cats, because I thought most cats are Slytherins, but it still worked. You know, just an aside. Um, but first, what if I told you that aside from Hogwarts, there are 10 other wizarding schools in the world? Some that we know of already, such as Bovatons, which is located somewhere in the Pyrenees and Durmstrang, which is situated somewhere in the far north of Europe. But what about the rest of the world? You guys. <laughs> um, what if I told you that there are wizarding schools in Africa, Brazil, so I knew that would get here, Australia, Russia, and other secret locations. So this evening, for the very first time, I have the pleasure of reading, of revealing brand new details about some of these wizarding schools. So I'm going to take it to Joe's words now, which I read from a page, because it'd be weird to read Joe's words on a teleprompter. They just feel a bit sacred. So I'm going to read them from here. <laughs> so here we go. There are 11 long established and prestigious wizarding schools worldwide, all of which are registered with the International Confederation of Wizards. Smaller and less, less well-regulated institutions have come and gone, are difficult to keep track of, and are rarely registered with the appropriate ministry, in which case I cannot vouch for the standard of education they might offer. <laughs> Anyone wishing to know whether there is an approved magical school in their region should address an owl inquiry to the International Confederation of Wizards Educational Office. There you go, you have the address now. <laughs> um, <laughs> The precise location of each of the following schools is a closely guarded secret. The schools fear not only Muggle persecution, not us, we're not Muggles by the way, for it is a sad fact that at various times in their long histories, all these institutions have been buffeted by the effects of wizard wars and of hostile attention from both the foreign and domestical magical communities. It is not only in Britain that the education of magical youth has been, a subject, has been subject to ministry interference or pressure. As a general rule, magical schools tend to be situated in landlocked mountainous areas, although there are notable exceptions, as will be seen, as such regions are difficult for muggles to access and easier to defend from, other dark, from dark wizards. 
So as we know, these wizarding schools go to great lengths to guard their secrets, which is why it's so exciting to be able to reveal the names and locations of four more schools. So you can get your applications in, ASAP. Um, keep in mind that a lot of what I'm about to tell you has never been shared with anyone before, but you will find all this and more on Pottermore's interactive map that you can see here this weekend, and it's really cool. They have like beasts and just things, people flying on trees. You have to look at it. I can't really explain it. Um, the first school I can exclusively reveal uh, is, and by the way, this is phonetically spelled, so I'm definitely pronouncing it correctly, Castelo Bruxu in Brazil. Hidden deep in the rainforest, this is how J.K. Rowling describes this mysterious school. Castelo Bruxu is an imposing square edifice of golden rock, often compared to a temple. Both building and grounds are protected by the Kaipora, small and furry spirit beings, sounds so cute, who are extraordinarily mischievous and tricky, and who emerge under cover of night to watch over the students and the creatures who live in the forest. Former Castelo Bruxu headmistress Benedita Dorado, that one is not spelled for me, so excuse me, Brazil. Um, she was once heard to laugh heartily on an exchange visit to, the Hog to Hogwarts when headmaster Armando Dippet complained of Peeves the poltergeist. Her offer to send him some kaipora for the Forbidden Forest to show you what trouble really is was not accepted. Well, that's all I can say on the Brazilian magic school. So yeah, as I say, get in your applications quickly. Uh, to find out more, you'll just have to go to Pottermore this evening and read it yourselves. Because there is more information on there, by the way. This is abbreviated. The next school I can reveal exclusive new writing about is the Japanese Wizarding School. It's called Mahuto Koro. Here's a little of what J.K. Rowling has to say about Mahuto Koro. The ornate and exquisite palace of Mahuto Koro is made of mutton fat jade and stands on the topmost point of the uninhabited, or so Muggles think, volcanic island of Minami Iwo Jima. Students are presented with, this is the coolest bit by the way, I can't believe Hogwarts didn't think of this. Students are presented with enchanted robes when they arrive, which grow in size as they do which the Weasleys could totally have done with, <laughs> which gradually change color as the learning of their wearer increases, beginning a faint pink color and becoming, if top grades are achieved in every magical subject, gold. If, now this is where it gets bad, if the robes turn white, this is an indication that the student has betrayed the Japanese wizard's code and adopted illegal practices, which in Europe we call dark magic, or broken the international statute of secrecy. To turn white is a terrible disgrace, which results in instant expulsion from the school and trial at the Japanese Ministry of Magic, Ministry for Magic, which I just think we would never have had a Voldemort if we had had those robes, so. <laughs> Hogwarts, you, mis you missed a trick. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, um, I, I think that's all on the Japanese school. Oh, if you want to learn more about how the Japanese first discovered Quidditch and why they're so very good at it, go to Pottermore within the next few minutes because that information will all be there. Um, but before you go there, I've got two more schools to reveal. This next one is located in Africa, and it's called Wagadu. Here's a beautiful description of the school from J.K. Rowling. Although Africa has a number of smaller wizards, wizarding schools, I don't know why I said that, sorry. Smaller wizarding schools, there's only one that has stood the test of time, at least a thousand years, and achieved an enviable international reputation, Wagadu. The largest of all wizarding schools, it welcomes students from all over the enormous continent. The only address ever given is Mountains of the Moon. Visitors speak of a stunning edifice carved out of the mountainside and shrouded in mist, so that it sometimes appears to simply float in mid-air. You'll definitely want to read about an incident involving the Wagadu students and their ability to transform, transfigure into safari animals in sync. That part of the story is, of course, exclusively on Pottermore 2. So, nobody's going out tonight. We're all going to Pottermore. <laughs> Me included. Um, and now, 
the final school I'm able to reveal to you tonight. I'm especially excited about this one, and I think you will be too. It's the American School for Magic. The place where American witches and wizards are educated. So you guys have all been there, so it's not a big deal. Um, I can reveal for the first time that the name of the North American Wizarding School is Ilver Morning. There you go. <laughs> it for now <laughs> because I'm told that Pottermore will have a lot more to come on Ilver Morney and all these other wizarding schools soon so make sure to stay tuned and keep reading Pottermore because they're always releasing really now I've got a question for you guys are you ready to welcome the rest of the cast from the Harry Potter film series <laughs> ladies and gentlemen she's a member of Dumbledore's Army and the Ravenclaw's Seeker. Our next guest is the actress who portrayed Cho Chang. Please welcome Katie Lu. Hi, Katie. Our next guest portrayed Neville Longbottom, who started his journey as shy and clumsy, but as we all know, finished as a courageous hero. Please welcome back Matthew Lewis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, she was the youngest of the Weasleys. Yeah! And the true love of Harry Potter, Ginny Weasley. Please welcome back. guest this evening portrayed one of Harry Potter's best friends yeah! as Ron Weasley he stood by Harry's side from the very beginning please welcome Rupert Grint how you doing Rupert now we are extremely excited to have all of you here thank you very much and we've got something very very special in store for all of you but we need everyone's participation out there. So, do you guys want to help us out? Now, as you can see, our stars have their wands, so please, ladies and gentlemen, get your wands at the ready as well. Now, I want you to hold those wands up really high for me. Great. Together, we are all gonna close out the evening with a spell. When I count down from three, I need everyone to say Lumos Maxima. Are you ready? Let's try it one time. Three, two, one. Lumos Maxima! That was, that was pretty good. But you guys think they can do a little better than that? Maybe a little louder? Maybe a little more energy? Let's try it again. Three, two, one. I love it. I think we're ready for it. Ladies and gentlemen, hold them high. Three, two, one. Lumos Maxima.
Are you guys ready for the weekend? Yes! We want to thank all of our guests for joining us tonight, as well as you, all the Harry Potter fans in the audience. We look forward to seeing you throughout the weekend and all the activities we have planned, starting with the Harry Potter Expo, which opens again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. All right, Universal, I am heading out. I am frozen to the core, and it's only probably like 50 degrees outside or 40 degrees. I totally pushed myself probably too far than what I should have today, but I am very glad that we ran into folks that we're friends with and friends of the channel and friends in general. So Felipe, Joey, Josh, Brandon, Meg, everybody that we ran into, thank you so much for an awesome day. Now it's time to head back home. All right, I am back home finally from Universal. Just a couple of thoughts before we close the video. The Expo Center, as always, for the last, this is the third year now, um, way, way, way overpacked in the line to get in there. Totally ridiculous. If you are going and you are not going um, at rope drop and you don't have the package, you're going to be waiting in line. We waited in line 90 minutes to get inside and then like another hour and change for the studio tour experience. Everything has lines, so you got to bring a lot of patience and something to kill time. Thankfully, we had some really great friends to kill some time with. That said, I think Universal will be really well served at moving where they have the location for this expo every year to maybe one of the bigger sound stages. It would only make sense so that the capacity could be increased much larger so that it can accommodate more people. Maybe they could even add more than one sorting hat also so that more than one uh, line of folks can get sorted at a time because that line is absolutely ridiculous. I do think that this year's expo was a lot smaller than it was last year. I don't think there was as many uh, interactive exhibits and there was certainly not as much memorabilia or outfits or trinkets and things that you could see from the movies that we saw last year. I thought it was so much of a um, better improvement over the first year and they kind of reverted back to the way it was on the first year. All that said, fun time, especially if you're going there for the first time. But like I said, bring patience, bring something to do. You're going to be standing in line a lot. There is a lot of people all crammed together for the same thing at the same time. So on that note, signing off for the night. Thank you for all of your likes. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys. There he is. Greatest mascot in Orlando.